After setting up the project geometry, the next steps are to define the waveforms, antennas, and transceiver sets to be used in the simulation. To add the waveform, right-click in the main window and select New Waveform. Choose Sinusoid from the drop-down menu and click OK. On the Waveform Properties window, you can enter a short description and adjust the frequency. This simulation will be run at 28 gigahertz, so we'll enter that frequency now. Once the waveform has been created, it can be seen in the Waveforms tab of the main window. Now we'll add an antenna. In this example, we're going to be using a 4x4 MIMO array that utilizes a user-defined antenna gain pattern for the MIMO elements. To add it to the project, right-click on the main window and select New Antenna. Select MIMO from the drop-down menu and click OK. The MIMO Antenna Properties window will open. Enter a short description and ensure that the 28 gigahertz sinusoid waveform is selected. In the available antennas table, there is a default half-wave dipole antenna. We'll be replacing this with an imported user-defined antenna pattern. Right-click in the table and select Add New Antenna, then select User-Defined from the drop-down menu and click OK. Navigate to the desired user-defined UAN file and select it. This will open the Antenna Properties window for the UAN, which allows us to adjust a variety of parameters, such as the short description, maximum gain, and transmission line loss. For now, we'll leave these values as default. Clicking the vertical bar on the right side will expand the window to show the rendered 3D antenna pattern. Now that the UAN has been imported, we can remove the unneeded half-wave dipole by right-clicking it and selecting Remove Antenna. The next step is to build the MIMO array. Click the Build Element Array button to open the MIMO Array Builder. This tool allows us to build arrays of MIMO elements by specifying the antenna pattern to be used, rotations of that pattern, and the desired number of elements in the X, Y, and Z dimensions and the spacing between them. For this example, we're going to build a 4x4 array in the Y, Z plane. Ensure that the UAN is selected for the antenna and enter 4 as the number of elements in both the Y and Z axes. The spacing between elements can be specified either as a metric measurement in meters or as a number of wavelengths as determined by the frequency of the waveform we selected earlier in the MIMO Antenna Properties window. For this example, we'll use the default spacing of half a wavelength. Click the Preview button to see how this array will look, and click OK. Back on the MIMO Antenna Properties window, we can now see all of the elements added to the Edit Array Elements table. Each individual element can be modified to select a different antenna pattern or change its position and rotation. Individual elements can also be added or removed by right-clicking anywhere in the table. When the MIMO array is finished, click OK to close the Properties window. Lastly, we'll create the antenna to be used for the receiver set, which will be a simple half-wave dipole. To create the antenna, right-click, Select New Antenna and choose Half-Wave Dipole from the drop-down menu. Many of the standard parameters seen previously on the user-defined antenna pattern can be found here, but we'll be leaving them as default for this example. Ensure that the 28 GHz sinusoid is selected as the waveform for the antenna and click OK to complete its creation. Now it's time to place the transmitters and receivers in the scene. This example will contain one transmitting base station utilizing the MIMO antenna array and one receiver grid utilizing the half-wave dipole. Start by right-clicking and selecting New Transmitter Set Points. A points set 
allows individual transmitter points to be placed anywhere in the scene. Other set types create a series of regularly spaced points, such as a route through the scene, a uniform arc, or a grid in the XY plane, useful for showing signal coverage of an area. When in the editing mode, left click to place a transmitter point, and right click to finish. When the TXRX properties window appears, you can enter a short description and ensure that the correct antenna and waveform have been assigned to the transmitter by clicking on the Transmitter Properties button. If desired, any transmitter or receiver can be turned into a transceiver or changed from a transmitter to receiver and vice versa by enabling and disabling the transmitting and receiving portions of the set. Next, we'll adjust the elevation of the transmitter to an appropriate height. To do this, click Layout Properties, click Edit Control Points, and double-click on the point dimensions in the table. Here, we'll change the z-value to 12 meters. Now that the MIMO transmitter is in place, we can visualize the antenna pattern in the scene to see if the orientation is correct. This can be done by right-clicking on the transmitter set on the Transmitter's Receivers tab in the main window and selecting Show Antenna Pattern. To adjust the orientation, go back into the Transmitter Properties window and enter the desired rotation values. Next, we'll place the receiver grid to measure the signal coverage in the scene. To start, right-click and select New, Receiver Set, XY Grid. Click a starting point in the project view and drag to extend the bounds of the grid over the desired area. After letting go, the TXRX Properties window will appear. Enter a short description and click the Receiver Properties button to ensure the half-wave dipole antenna and 28 GHz waveform are selected. In the Layout Properties, we can adjust the spacing between points in the grid to 10 meters, as well as make manual adjustments to the maximum extents of the set and its location or elevation if desired. For this example, we're going to use Adjacent Path Generation, or APG, as a runtime optimization for the simulation. This optimization performs ray tracing to a more coarsely spaced set of receivers than what is defined in the actual set, and then uses the resulting ray paths to rapidly create paths to the remaining nearby receivers in the full resolution set. This can significantly reduce runtime in some scenarios by removing the need to ray trace to every receiver point in very dense sets. Enable APG by checking the Enable checkbox. Uncheck the default checkbox for adjacency distance, which defines the core spacing that ray tracing will be performed on as part of the APG optimization. In most cases, we recommend that the adjacency distance not exceed twice the spacing of the actual set. For this example, we'll set the adjacency distance to 20 meters because the set's actual spacing is 10 meters. Close the TXRX Properties window to complete the receiver grid.